welcome to Hop Along Studio. In today's video, I want to share with you how you can use water soluble markers with stamps to create beautiful techniques that you can use in your art journal and your other creative projects. So let's get started. So when we're talking about water soluble markers, there's a lot of different varieties and brands that create water soluble markers. In this case, I actually have three that I generally use. One of them are the Tombow markers. I've had these for probably more than 10 years. They still work really, really well. They come with both a a brush tip and more of a writing nib on them. I also have these Crayola markers that are also water soluble and they're a little bit more of a cheaper option when it comes to water soluble markers. So I also have these Aquapen graphics that I have been using. These ones also come with a brush and a writing nib and these ones have my new favorite marker. I've been using them quite a bit in my creative projects. So, but for today's project, I'm just gonna stick with the Tombow markers. I'm just choosing one brand and kind of sticking with it throughout this video. So first of all, I wanted to share with you just basically what you need to do to add color to a stamp. And so basically you want to take the brush side of the pen and you want to just add color onto the surface. This is going to be kind of hard to see with the camera, but you just want to use the side of the pen. You don't want to damage that brush nib. And you're just adding a little bit of color to the surface. And then I'm going to come in maybe with some pink. Just try to add some highlights in places. And what's so fun about this is you can get a lot of different colors onto your page that you would not normally be able to get on a stamp just because you can add the color in manually just with a pen. And you want to do this until you've kind of covered the whole surface. I'm going to be using some areas that have the flowers. I'm going to have, add some browns in. I'm going to add some leaves in. The sky's the limit for how many colors you want to add onto your stamp. And if you're just wanting to use this not in a watercolor way but just adding it to a stamp to add it to a piece of paper. I would suggest using something like gloss paper. It usually works quite well on it. You're gonna to want to, after you've added your color, you're gonna to wanna to huff on the stamp with your breath. The moisture in your breath is gonna moisten the ink a little bit before it goes onto the surface. And then you just wanna press it onto the surface. Make sure you press nice and hard to get, make sure you're getting a good imprint of it. And there you go. So you can see that just by adding a little bit of color, now my birds are a different color than my leaves and my flowers and everything else. So it makes for a really nice look, but Today, I really wanted to focus on how we can use this in more of a watercolor way. So the first thing I want to do is show you how to add layers of color with a background stamp. So I'm just using some of these yellow markers that I have. And part of the reason that I am using the Tombow today is you might notice that as I've been working with different colors together, it does end up getting the color onto the marker. And all you need to do is just wipe it off using a piece of paper and just write until the color goes away. And so I'm going to be using several different colors of yellow on this. And when you're using a background stamp, if you're not doing a perfectly square image, don't go all the way to the edges with your ink. This way it's going to be a lot more organic instead of having it all one color or one intensity. And you're not gonna have any really harsh lines. And you'll notice that even as I'm mixing this onto the stamp, areas are going green where the blue and the green are mixing together. So when I'm adding this to watercolor paper, unlike the glossy paper, it's going to not absorb the color in the same way. So you want to mist it a little bit with a water bottle. In this case, I'm doing a very fine mist just across the stamp like that. And you'll see that a lot of the ink is starting to react a little bit to the water. So now I'm going to put it down on my page. And you'll see a lot of it, it still has a lot of the design. Other areas is quite subtle. So I'm going to go in again. And a third time just to add in that color. And so let's say you want this to not necessarily be as strong along the edges. Well, then this is where you can add water in. And you can let it drip down the page. And I want to leave this area where you can see the definition of the image. And these other areas, I'm just going to let them bleed. And if you feel like that's too much along the bottom, you can always blot with a paper towel. And that's going to soften up how much color goes down. And maybe that's enough for you, but maybe you want to add a little bit more. So then you can go in and do the same thing again. In this case, I'm just going to take a paper towel and just wipe it across my stamp, just get a lot of the, that extra green that's mixed off. And I think I want to maybe add a little bit more blue. So I'm going to go a little less with the yellow. 
then maybe add in a bit more blue. And this is where you can choose a few different types of blue that you maybe want to add on. And again, just do the same thing. Quick spritz with your water and just stamp it onto your page. In this case, I'm going to go a bit higher. And I'm going to add a few more areas again. So again, along the top there, you end up with all of that detail that maybe you want. But then other areas, you can just spritz. And because I don't want the edge there to cut off here, I'm just going to continue to add a little bit more water. And I'm just dabbing because I want the bottom a little bit lighter and I will explain why in a little bit. And if you feel like the top there has a bit too much of a solid line, you can also go the other way. And that's not going to take away the definition in the entire image, but it will give you a little bit of softer edge there. So you can see just by using one background stamp, now we've ended up with three different colors, a lot of different mixes using one image. So if you're not into using other people's images or you want to try to use things around your home, you can always use just a variety of mark making tools. These uh, objects can be anything from containers like this one that I ended up getting some aquarium plants in, uh, to water bottles, to pen caps, to almost anything you can come up with. One thing to think about when you're trying to add images with mark making tools is try to find something with a good edge. This one has a little bit of a flat edge on it which makes it really great for this type of technique. I've been using some ones that have been a little bit thinner and smaller and I found it was really hard to get a really good mark. So in this case what I'm doing is I'm just taking again that edge of the container and just adding ink to it using the edge of the brush nib. And then I'm going to very lightly squeeze it with water so it beads. And so if you like the idea of like the whole coffee stains or coffee marks on things, instead of using a stamp, you can always just use something like this and turn it into a mark making tool. I'm also going to try to show you using the bottom of the container. I'm not sure if this one will be as good just because it's quite thin, but we'll give this a try. I put quite a bit of water on that just to see if that will help it work a bit better. A lot of it has to come down to like how much ink and how much water you manage. But there you see going from much thicker line to much thinner line. And let's say you don't like how strong that line is. Again, add water. Now I've softened it in there. I could soften the whole thing and make it almost disappear. And sometimes I want to use part of a stamp instead of an entire stamp for this. So because I'm already moving into the circles thing, I'm going to add a few more circles. And this one I'm going to be using uh, one of my yellow markers, one of the blue ones. So at any point, if you find things are too much, you can always add water and you can dab it off. There's lots of different ways that you can adjust how this looks. You can add actually quite a bit of water to the surface like I did here. And that will change the effect that you get. That is a very watery, very soft feel to this. And the fun thing is if you really want to go quite bold, which again, I think I'll just use more of the yellow for this so it's not sticking out too much from our page. You can just add ink to it and just add it straight to the surface if you'd like. Again, it's going to be quite bold. It's going to stick out quite a bit. But again, if that's too much, you can soften it and even dab on it a little bit if you don't like the water pooling and you just want, you don't want the color to really meld as much. You just kind of want to pull it off. Uh, that's another option. And because there are wet areas on the surface, just by by adding your stamp into those wet areas, you get different effects. The big thing about using water soluble markers on a page like this is that you really need the water to have them react in a way that's really pleasing and really interesting. And so you can do a little bit of water, you can do a lot of water, you can go for a very soft look, you can go for a lot more defined look. The beauty of these markers isn't just stamping them on gloss paper, even though you can do that. My favorite use for them is doing stuff like this where you're adding color, you're controlling the color color, you come up with some really interesting results. So the last thing I want to show you is you've created these layers. Let's say you want to add a focal image that's still using these same pens. So how do you get it to stick out against the background in a way that it is pleasing and it doesn't get lost? And that's part of the reason I tried to only do a lot, little bit of the drips and a lot of lighter colors below here because this is where my focal image is going to go and this way I'm not competing with everything else that's going on here. Also think about the color wheel. The color wheel so far, I've been kind of sticking with the blue, green, yellow side and so really the opposite of the green is the red. red 
red, orange, red, violet. So I can do everything from red to red, violet to red, orange in here. In this case, I'm sticking with more of a conventional red color. And I'm going to start adding in a variety of colors. And so this is a way you can start tying things in. Because if you have just red here, it can be a very jarring contrast to everything else. So I'm going to use the yellows that I've had before plus the reds, and, and also chosen greens that were kind of in the same color family as my blend. And that way, that brings cohesion to the page instead of it feeling as jarring. And so you wanna color them in the same way. This stamp might be a little bit easier to see. I'm basically adding yellow to the centers to start with. I try to move kind of from the lighter colors to the darker colors. I try to stick to one image at a time. So in this case, I'm sticking with adding color to the buds of the flower. And I'm gonna go in with some of this mid-red. And you want some of the areas to overlap, and that's why these end up getting a little bit dirty and that's part of the reason I've started using some of my older pens for this and not my brand new ones that I just bought because <laughs> you do need to take a little bit of time to clean them up afterwards just so the color doesn't stay on there because the next time you want to write with it if you've contaminated your yellow with red or something like that basically you end up having yellow and red on your surface when you write next and that's not a bad thing if that's what you're looking for but I'm trying to really think it through and try to keep my pens as clean as possible just to not contaminate the color. And then on that same one, I'm just going to go along the edges with the dark red. And then any area that I kind of want to define, like I'm trying to define the edges of these leaves. This is a very kind of loose stamp as it is. So it is going to be a little less defined at the edges but I do want to see it as much as possible. And as much as you might feel like you're covering up all the color you just put down, you'll see some of it through. Add my mids in there, and I'll do it in the right order. Start with the mids, and then move to the dark red. And then for the leaves, I'm gonna start again with a lighter green. Again, you might notice that I'm not being super precious or super perfect about how I'm laying down my color. If a little bit ends up on each other, it's okay. So the time you add a little bit of water to kind of soften this up before you're adding it to your surface, it's not gonna be super noticeable. And so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker green as well, just for a few edges, a little bit of highlighting in places. I don't wanna make this too dark, but I do want it to stand out. Because we're adding this onto top of color that's already here, we don't want it to fall to the background. We want this to be our focal image. So when you're adding this, at this point it's been sitting for a few minutes, so very light spritz of water across the stamp. And I'm starting in the bottom left hand corner. And I had a little bit of a problem with my stamping block getting caught on the edge here. So that's why I got a little less of a great image in here. But overall it's pretty good. And if it's a little soft, you can always just add a little bit of water to even almost soften it up more since it looked like a stamping mistake. It looks okay. And if you wanted to just add this again, you could just spritz more water to it. It's going to be a much lighter valued image. But you can see that actually worked quite well. So you can usually get more than one stamp out of an image. But I'm gonna clean this up again and I'm gonna stamp this one again because I do want to continue up along the edge, but I do want a little bit of a slightly less soft image. So with every page and technique that I do, I'm looking for some level of intention of what I want to try to accomplish from it. I know a lot of people say, oh, just relax, let's take a relaxing, have fun with it, but I like trying to learn about myself a little bit through my art and through my creativity. And one way that I do that is think a lot about the intention, like what am I trying to accomplish from this? And like, why do I enjoy working with these pens? Why do I like trying to make things more loose? Why do I enjoy the process of just the lighter feel to some of my pieces? And the reason for that is it's the idea of moving away from perfectionism. I know a lot of us struggle with perfectionism in our art. There's a reason so many people don't show their art to anyone. I purposely make a point to post not only on YouTube, but just post my work in general. I'm part of a creative journaling group and where we share work every week. And it's very empowering to share with people what you're doing and, and what you're trying to accomplish through what you're doing. And it's a very powerful way of just being seen through your art and through your creativity. And I think it helps us move away from being so perfectionistic about everything. I, I love the watercolor techniques just because they're a little less controllable. And that's why I find them so relaxing to do because if it isn't perfect that's okay um, it's not about being perfect it's about connecting and learning through my art there's something to be said that's very powerful about the process and so I guess my word for you through this is just encouraging you not to be too perfectionistic uh, enjoy the process of this enjoy the process of just adding color of just working through the process of just seeing what color combinations you like how you like things to drip uh, what things you can find around your house to make marks with get a light spritz there I try to connect these branches and I'm gonna leave it there 
I was originally going to do a bunch more up here, but I think this is good. I, I like where it's going. It brings the eye up in the direction that I want it to, and it looks really great. So if you ever feel like your image is falling to the background, you can always use acrylic paint pen to help bring it forward. In this case, I'm using this Pen Touch uh, gold pen that I have found just really recently, as well as my favorites, the Uni Posca pens. And if you're interested in a good paint pen, uh, look into the Uni Poscas. I actually have a whole video about that. And if you've been enjoying this video so far, if you could like it and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Your support means so much to me. When you're adding color here, just add dots in the small areas of it. You're not going crazy. You're not looking to add every detail. You're just trying to add a little bit of color and definition to some spots that maybe don't have quite as much as you would like them to have. Especially one like this that is quite loose. By adding that little bit of paint pen, it can make a difference. You can give it a little bit more definition. Again, I'm doing very loose mark making. I was thinking about this page. I was thinking about the whole idea of like, not just even the idea of like staying away from perfectionism but even the idea of self-love um, about how creativity can be such a way we can love ourselves and in some ways even love those around us because by sharing our art with them and sharing our experiences through our art that can mean a lot to other people and then I'm going to use my uni Posca but one thing to be aware of is when you're using it with a water medium it might end up blending to pink in areas and you don't want to do every outline what I'm doing here is just some edges and it's, it's very subtle it's not a lot of definition but it's enough definition to go this is in front of the background by just adding those little tiny bits of white. And I think the idea is don't actually do the entire outline because then you kind of lose the effect of just having something pop a little bit and so it looks like oh you outlined the entire image. Again a little goes a long way. And the areas that are quite white it might not seem like it makes any difference to add a bit more white but it actually does help it pop just very subtly. It might not seem noticeable but it is. So I wanted to finish this page by just adding a little bit of journaling and things that I've been learning just through this process. So I put down grow in self-compassion, love myself and others, embrace the process. I hope that through this page you've not only just learned a few new techniques, but also just a little bit more about the creative process itself. And so if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss on any future videos. And you can always find the written instructions and the photos for this project on my website, hopalongstudio.com. I hope you have a really great week, and I will see you next time.